All right, welcome to our next episode. Today we'll be talking about how you can use Rx to actually do really powerful, complex queries. And we'll show you event processing in detail. So again, we're going to come back to this, uh, what, what Rx is. It's observables, the representing asynchronous data streams part, link, which is the query part, and schedulers, the parameterizing concurrency part. Today we're focusing on the query part or the link aspect. So here's a problem. I have a stream of stock ticks. Actually, if you did the last challenge, you'll know where that stream of stock ticks came from. And now you want to find a 10% daily increase in price in that stream for a particular symbol. How can we do that? What we can do is use link. So here in this example, we have Microsoft and Intel stock. We have this stream of, of all these prices coming along. And at the end, we have this uncompleted message here. And what we're going to do, first of all, is group um, the symbols. I group, I said group the stock quotes by symbols. So we'll use a group by and we'll say by the, by the symbol. And what it does is it takes the Microsoft ones and the Intel ones and it then splits them into separate streams. So now we actually have a stream of streams. And so that would rep be represented by I observable of I observable of stock quote. And uh, so, for example, on the outer one, it's a stream really of groups, which the groups are, are, are uh, consist of a key, which is the symbol, as well as the stream, which is the data. So in this case, as soon as the first Microsoft stock quote appears, it creates a new group with that symbol, and then the, the actual data stream has all of those stock quotes in it. When the first Intel one occurs, then it has the same uh, pattern. If there was a third symbol, it would occur where it did. And that's kind of how the, the group by works. The next thing we want to do is actually take each of these symbols, uh, each of these stock quotes and by symbol, and actually aggregate it with the previous day. You can use buffer um, that takes the count arguments. In this case, I want a rolling buffer of size two, which is the previous day and the current day, and actually roll it by one, uh, one stock quote each time. And uh, so you'll see here that I combine these two together, these two, and so on. And it'll do that within each stream. So now I have grouped and I've gotten the previous day with the current day. You'll notice that the first stock quote disappeared. That's because there was no previous for that, mm -hmm. uh, for that day. And so now we have the, you know, the previous and current. We can do some sort of calculation to figure out if there's a 10% increase. In this case, we'll do a where, which is a filter. And we check to see if the price is increased by our threshold amount. And the first one has not. This one has, has not, and so on. And all we're left with is the single one. And what we can do now is take uh, these groups and actually reduce them back to a single stream. In this case, we use merge. There's actually several ways you can reduce. Merge is one of them. And merge will take all of the individual things and, um, from all the different streams. So if you have a stream of streams, it'll attack, actually push them back into a single stream with the values occurring wherever they occurred in the, in the inner stream. So you're flattening the streams. Right? Exactly. We flatten them back here. And now we're just all left with is um, the Microsoft stock. 27.96 and 31.21, which is our 10% price increase. So here's kind of how the query would look. Um, we have, you know, from tick and stock ticks, this is our source. Then what we do is we group it by the symbol and we group it into the symbol stream. Then we say, um, we'll aggregate it by a rolling buffer of size two and we roll it by one each time. We call that window and then we apply the price filter and we call that the increase. We check to see if the increase is greater than 10%. And then we project out the, um, the, the key, which is going to be the symbol, and the increase amount. And this is kind of our, our complex event processing query. So let's take a look at a demo of that. We actually see, we've seen buffer in one of the earlier ones. Yeah, we've seen buffer. And actually, to notice the type of the, the window that we saw here was an I list, right? That's right. An I list of T, or in this particular case, an I list of stock quotes, most likely. And, you know, those values that you can actually have in there, you can do all sorts of link to objects queries on top of them as well, right? That's right. And for all yep. the buffer ones, there's also windows, mm -hmm. which yep. are I observable of I observable. And they have the same set of overloads. Yep, exactly. So maybe we should take a look at some of the windowing capabilities. Here, yeah, right? yep. windows, group buys, that'd yep. be great. So let's actually create a new project. And this time, let's just do a console application and just, you know, create some very simple uh, stream here of data that will group by some key. And then we'll also do some let's do like console input, maybe. Console input. Okay, sure. Let's do some console input and let's group, you know, the console input based on uh, things that the user actually writes, like starting letters or lengths or something. So let's do um, static i enumerable of string, which is basically just a loop that will produce, you know, the values that the user is typing at the console. So let's do, you know, this thing, call this thing get input. And I'll just use, you know, C sharp iterators here while to yield return console.readline. 
So basically what this does is if you do a for each over get input, it will actually block till the user writes the next, uh, next thing at the console. And it will actually pump that out to the enumerator and you can actually just iterate over that. So just to show that this really works, for s in get input, you know, console write line s. Now I actually have an enumerable source, you know, of user input, right? You know, the user can write hello world and so on, and you know, it just comes out. Of course, I don't want to do things with enumerables in this case. I actually want to make actually a timeline out of that of events, like the user types something, and it's as if an event arrives in the system, right? It's a very good, you know, mock input of data. In reality, it com could come from the network or anything like that. So instead of doing a for each loop, let's actually do two observable on the i enumerable sequence, which gives us an i observable of string. So instead of doing a for each here, let's just take get input and do, you know, var source equals get input to observable. And the to observable lives in system reactive link. We're going to do another thread too. And exactly, we want to basically do the to observable, which basically iterates over the i enumerable. And somewhere, you know, such that we can do event processing in the meantime, like make the whole thing asynchronous. So we're going to introduce some concurrency here, basically designating, you know, the location on which this, um, you know, for each loop over get input actually works, which will block on user input. So we don't want to be blocked in our query. Let's do scheduler. And let's say, for example, let's do a new thread that's basically sitting there and reading things from the console. So as soon as I do that, I can, of course, subscribe to it and just, you know, we should see exactly the same piece of code, but I don't want to block here. Let's do console. You can't do a read line, but you could do a for each for the subscribe. Oh, I can do a for each. For the subscribe. Yeah, oh, yeah, for each yeah. I can do for each here, which is a blocking operator. Uh, so this one actually is not like uh, subscribe would immediately terminate here, you know, because it's asynchronous. For each will actually wait till the end of the stream, but there's no end of the stream. So I can actually write things and it, it still works, but now it has actually come to I observable sequences. So now that I have that sequence, let's actually group things by uh, user input. So let's say that, you know, var s equals from, you know, s in the source. Let's actually group s by, say, for example, s dot length into g. And now I actually have, you know, an I observable of I grouping or I group observables, I grouping observables that contain the key, which is the length of the string, as well as, you know, the values that sort of fall into that bucket of the same length. So if I would actually give here like Wes, Bart and Eric, I would create two groups, um, you know, the group of people with, you know, names of three letters and then the group of people with four letters. So let's actually uh, group this thing into G and let's select out um, for example, well, actually, let's just select the whole thing, right? Let's just do um, something like this, right? So now I have the result sitting here. If I do result for each, let's take a look at what comes out of here. Like, you know, what's G look like? As I said before, actually, G will simply be something that contains a key. So you see the key will be the length here. So I can do console right line of g dot key and i will say new group with length equal to g dot key like this and then i can listen to that group which you can do by doing a subscribe so you can basically say you know i have a new group that has been created let's listen to that particular group and do things with that so let's actually do console right line here and let's do you know x goes to which is you know the uh, name of the user actually coming through and let's say console write line um, plus x, you know, and I can, of course, use this g dot key again to sort of say, like, you know, which group it's member of. So here you will see Wes member of three, Bart member of some other group, and so on. So now all those groups are actually going in, in parallel here. So when a new group comes in, we actually print that to the screen, and then we subscribe to the inner group. If you would do the same and link to objects, you would just have two nested for each loops, right? You would have a for each loop over every group, and then you would have a for each loop over all of the elements. I don't want to do a for each here because I might introduce too much blocking, so I'm doing an async and subscribe inside, inside the group um, handler. So let's do Ctrl F5, and let's see what comes out. When I enter Wes, you see that a new group was created with length 3, and we see Wes is a member of 3. 
I can now enter, you know, for example, Bart, and then you see a new group is created for people with length, um, you know, name length of four. I can put Eric in here, and then you see, like in this particular case, you see no new group is created, but we are still listening to that inner group, and we see to new ben member that. coming in. What? Ben. Ben. Okay. Yes, I was already you thinking like my group. somebody with you know three letters. Maybe you want another one. An A. <laughs> okay. You know, you know more people with three letters <laughs> than I do. E. Okay. So, uh, so here we see here yeah, we can do N with an E, and now you know we have gained somebody in our group as well. And then ultimately, let's do Savas, and then we get you know groups with length of five. Um, and so you see that you know new groups are actually being produced whenever you do something um, over here. So. Basically, now we're listening to multiple groups, which is basically created by doing group by, which produces an i-observable of i-observables. Uh, we have other operators that do something very similar, like the buffer operators and, when, yeah, buffer and the window, window operators. So let's actually do something like a window operator, where we basically um, listen to events coming from the, the console again, uh, but now we'll actually chunk them up in groups of, say, like uh, three inputs. That's yeah. great. So let's do var result equals source dot and let's do window uh, to basically show uh, something that's very analogous to the grouping operators. So we have a number of window overloads, as you can see over here. You have an overload that takes in the count. So I can, for example, say three, which creates windows of length three that are consecutive and non-overlapping. So you get the first three, then the chunk of the next three, and so on and so on. You can also specify time spans, like if you want to listen for inputs, you know, for every second, for example, then you get windows of length one second. You can also specify uh, the more complex ones that actually have closing selectors. We'll not talk about those over here, but that allows you to actually have uh, some observable sequence that basically delineates when the, the window has to be closed. Yes. Uh, so that's actually a higher order composition here. Uh, we also have things like window that take an account and a skip. If you don't, if you want the uh, buffers to overlap or be totally disjoint, you can actually use those skip oper operators. And by and default, do, this count equals the skip. By default, indeed, the uh, consecutive windows are done by count and skip being the same, right? Yes. Um, so it's actually skipping from the beginning of the window, right? And you can actually pass in some other ones, like, you know, uh, time span and count, you know, whatever comes first, and so on and so on. So we have a lot of those, and we also have parameterization on the I schedulers for uh, creation of timers. Let's simply say, you know, we'll create um, windows of length three. As I do that, I get an I observable of I observable of string, where the outer one basically indicates that a new group has arrived or a new window has been opened. You can listen to the inner uh, window, and um, you know the inner ones basically contain the elements that actually actually fire. So let's do res for each um, again. So we're listening to the windows. Whenever a new window is created, I will actually do console right line, you know, new window created. And then I will basically listen to the uh, elements in the window. And I will simply do console right line of, you know, the elements inside the window. And so this looks very, very similar to the uh, group by that we've done before, which is also an I observable of I observables, right? Mm -hmm. So, and again, the only reason why we're using the for each here is because we don't want the main thread to go away. Exactly. Yeah. I could also, you know, do a while through underneath that, right? Yes. So let's actually execute that. You see a new window has been created. And um, even though I didn't put any input on the screen yet, simply because, well, we're at the beginning of a boundary of a window. And now you will see, um, you know, hello world there. You see that those three values were actually produced inside that window and then a new window was created. Um, so that's actually the non-overlapping windows that you see here. Now, if I would do window 3,1, would actually see the first three, then you know the second to the fourth, and so on. So you would see a sliding window, and you would see messages actually being produced multiple. In, into multiple windows, yes. right? So I could actually do something like var i equals zero. Whenever a new window comes, I will increment my counter. I will say that the window that I've created has number i, right? And I will have to be a little careful here with closures. I will have to say, you know, I will capture it here. But then, you know, for every value that actually comes inside the window, I will say, you know, um, let's say I will just put in here the x plus in plus j. So now basically for every window that's created, it gets its unique ID. And then those IDs are basically uh, put on the screen for all the messages that come in. So you will see that messages uh, that I have sitting here 
will actually be projected into multiple windows because the windows overlap. So if I do Eric, Eric is actually sitting in window zero. Now I have a new window one created, which overlaps partially with, you know, window zero. So if I put Bart here, you see Bart is both in window zero and one. If I introduce Wes, he's actually in three windows. If I now introduce Gert, for example, he's actually in one, two, three. So you actually see that the windows are sliding now and um, values can actually appear in multiple windows. So that's actually what, what's going on here. Now you can also do one more thing instead of doing window, in, in case you don't want to listen to the window as soon as it's created, you can also do buffer. And buffer is basically a way to create persistent windows, right? It's basically at the end of the window, it produces an eye list of all the values that were part of that particular window. And that's the important point is it happens at the end of the window. Exactly. Yep. yep. So with that. That's very good. So let's look at yep. the challenge. This is one of my favorite challenges actually. And uh, this challenge actually builds off the previous challenge. So last time we took the schedulers and we were able to create a stream of stock quotes. Now, um, spoiler alert, you're gonna see code here that's, uh, that could be a answer to that. All right, so down here, what we want you to do now is to modify the query that you previously had, which just uh, got the Microsoft um, closing price and date and now modify it to give you the, to compute the average high and average low over the past five trading days, as well as the current close and the date. Um, and so go off and write that query. If, you, if you're able to do that really easily, you can also try things like, instead of doing the past five trading days, do the past five days and see if that works out for you. And uh, have fun, write some good queries and share them online. Thank you.